Mike Freiberg is kind enough to join us. Now, he is a sitting Minnesota House rep, also representing an area where Judy Garland's ruby slippers were buried for seven years. But we're not talking about politics. We're not talking about ruby slippers. I got a contact. He basically gets in touch with me. Mike gets in touch with me and says, I know you've got Broadcorp for the Vikings and Dr. Joe for the T-Wolves. Do you have anyone for the Twins? I said, I don't got anyone for the Twins. He goes, can I be the Twins guy? I'm like, okay, you can be the Twins guy. But I guess I, I, the first thing I have to do here is check this out here, make sure this is legit. Mike Freiberg, kind enough to join us to talk about the Minnesota Twins. Hi, Mike. How are you? Great. How are you, Matt? I'm doing very well, sir. So let's get into the, the, the resume, the CV here. What is your justification to be the, the official AM 950 expert on the Twins? Well, I mean, I heard a few of your shows with Michael Broadcorp discussing the Vikings, and I figure I'm, I don't know that I'm more qualified, but I would get, based on what I know about Michael Broadcorp, I'd say I'm comparably qualified uh, to discuss the Twins as he is to talk about the Vikings. I mean, I I started out, I will admit, as a Fairweather fan in the 1991 World Series. That's really when I started watching them, but I, I stuck with it through some pretty lean years yeah. in the 90s and late <laughs> 90s, um, and Watched them a lot frequently with my dad, um, so I just I follow them very closely, um, and it's exciting too that we've uh, started a new season already. Marty Cordova, how about that? there? You go there. You went through some real lean years there for a while. <laughs> hey, he, he was rookie of the year. Don't he bag was, him, Marty Cordova. <laughs> he was pretty solid for a year or two there. He, was it? Uh, I think he got went on the injured list later in his career with a sun with a getting with a sunburn. Yeah, but at least when he was with the Twins, he was okay for a year or two. Was it Baltimore? He was at Baltimore and he got sunburned, and that was his, he was on the injured reserve list for that. That's a bad sunburn, man. You might want to put some uh, you know some sunscreen on before you go out there. All right. So uh, first of all, let's just let's just talk about the team as as a whole. Uh, they they played Kansas City. They opened up in Kansas City. They're off today. They will play two in Milwaukee, opening up for Milwaukee's home series. Then they play their home series against Cleveland starting on Thursday with likely an off day on Friday before they finish out the weekend. Uh, your thoughts going into this in Kansas City, what did you think about the lineup and, and, and the setup that they had for the Twins? Well, I mean, you know, they've had, they've had some injury problems. Uh, so, I mean, it seems like they avoided major injuries last year, like two years ago, and they could barely fill out the roster. But... I mean, just, you know, going into the series with Duran, Thielbar, Topa already on the injured list, uh, you know, it, it, it seemed like they were going to be able to make do. And then you have Royce Lewis getting injured already in game one. That guy can, can't even catch a break. I mean, two ACL tears in two years. Um, so, you know, I mean, all things considered, I think the first series went fairly well with the exception of game three. But, you know, you win, a, win your opening series. That's certainly not a bad way to start the season. Um, well, so, yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll, well, it should we should mention okay, we should mention here that the first game was a good win. That second game, it took them coming back. They were, you know, Vasquez comes up in the the late innings uh, with with bases loaded and or and one out doubles up and and you're like, okay, this game is going this is going to go bad. They end up really putting the pressure on in the eighth and ninth inning. They get the win there. So you know that game as a whole wasn't great until the very end. And then yesterday was an abomination. Uh, I guess maybe let, let's talk about Ober because he didn't make it two innings. He gave up eight earned runs. He looked atrocious. Oh, he looked, uh, yeah, there's no sugarcoating that. I mean, he did look terrible. I mean, hopefully, I mean, he's never been very good against Kansas City for some reason. It's not like they're a powerhouse, but I guess if, you know, every, it seems like a lot of pitchers have one team that they just can't really get past or pitchers have a hitter they can't get past, it seems like that's Kansas City for him. Hopefully it's just a off day for him and not like a foreshadowing of a of a poor year or anything for him because he's been one of their best pitchers the last couple of years. I mean, he's been pretty solid. Well, and I think that it it's the problem is and it wasn't just him. I mean that that pitching staff looked very hittable. Kansas City's not exactly the the Broadway Bombers here. It's 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 it's, it's it's a team that at times has the ability to hit and wit is pretty good, but for them to get thrashed around like that, I, uh, that was a more than just a little concerning because once again, our strength is supposed to be our bullpen and our bullpen just barely kind of got it, you know, got the rest of the game done. It was just, that was a, that was a brutal, brutally long game yesterday. 
Well, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the top of the bullpen, Griffin Jackson, Brock Stewart looked good in game one. And, you know, I mean, like Daniel Duarte and Jay Jackson, I don't know that they're the highest leverage guys you want, but at least, you know, they had decent outings yesterday in game three. Um, you know, like I said, uh, in Kansas City, I mean, they, you know, they, with Lugo and the guy, the lefty, uh, his name is escaping me, started game one. I mean, they, you know, they have some decent starting pitching too. So, uh, you know, it, the Twins were able to come back in game two. I mean, I still feel, you know, some of their hitters are, seem to be doing pretty well. You know, Correa has gotten some hits. Byron Buxton looks pretty good. So, I mean, I feel like, I guess I don't feel like the sky is falling quite yet. I'm no. sure, you know, if, you, if we speak again in a week, I might feel totally different. Your <laughs> loss looks pretty good so far. Well, and if I could, if I could say, Lopez looked fantastic in that opener, and Joe Ryan, he, oh, you know, that- and Joe Ryan kept us in that game on the second game for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, th- I think I feel like the pieces are there, um, and you know, uh, Carlos Santana has looked decent edward julian i think is going to have a good year so i don't know i think the pieces are are there hopefully ober just had an off day you know we'll get some people back from the injured list and things will start going better his era right now is 54 (laughs) (laughs) i I, I didn't even i I knew it would be up there i mean yeah you give up uh nine or ten runs in less than two innings that's gonna happen of uh, the the I'm not as well. I think uh, after this first series, I am a little okay. I mean, Royce Lewis aside, and I'll get back to Royce here in a second. I do feel somewhat okay about the, this hitting. Although once again, we the, the home run leader still is is Royce Lewis with that one hit. Um, but you know, Byron Buxton is hitting 300 right now. Uh, you know, Santana 273, Carlos Correa 273. Um, you 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 know. You do have some the cogs here. I guess the question here is, is whether or not you know. I'm very concerned about Buxton. I mean, I call him Mister Glass. He breaks way too easily. Uh, but I, I do, you know, if, if I agree with you, Edward Julian is 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 a good kid. I mean, it's so far one series down. He's hitting 200, but you know, it's kind of thrust into this situation. Kirilov is looking a little bit better as well. Your your thoughts just on the hitting alone? I mean. It did seem somewhat inconsistent, considering yesterday we got zero runs, and on the second game it took till the late innings for us to get the bats alive. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I do. You know, the health is always a concern with with Buxton. I mean, not just Buxton, but also Correa and obviously Royce Lewis, as we've already seen. I mean, those three could kind of make or break the season. I mean, as long as if we can get Royce Lewis back, and it sounds like it might be about two months. Um, I think you know with you know, platooning of Castro and Farmer, possibly, if, you know, to replace him at third. I mean, they're obviously not going to replace Royce Lewis's bat, but but they're okay. You know, they're competent. And, you know, as long as Buxton keeps looking healthy and Kirilov is, you know, health is a question with him too, I suppose, just as much. He's had some issues the last couple of years. So, um, so far, at least, it's encouraging that at least, you know, Buxton and Correa and Kirilov seem to be doing well and avoiding the the injury bug. I mean, it's only three games in, so who knows? Anything could change. But um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I do think the pieces are there, and if you can get some, you know, veteran leadership from Carlos Santana and um, you know, Walner has a good season again. I, I do feel like they definitely have potential to have a good to be a good hitting team. So the starters rounding out our starting rotation. Uh, Varland goes tomorrow against Milwaukee. You've got Paddock going on the second Milwaukee game. That's going to be our five-man starter for the time being. I mean, obviously, the, the the bad outing by Ober kind of sets the stage that, you know, you need Varland and Paddock to start, one of them at least, to start off showing some potential here. Uh, y- your thoughts on the, the back half of the starting rotation. Do you think that there's, you know, we have some ability there to, you know, Milwaukee's been a hitting club. I mean, I, I hope we can keep them in check. And once again, I understand this is very early in the season, but, it should be noted during spring break, you know, that, that we were giving up a lot of runs and we weren't hitting a lot, and that made me a little concerned. I'm a little wondering if this the late part of the rotation uh, in uh, Varland and in, and Paddock is, is, is one of them can come, come through and at least get that, you know, three ERA, keep the runs down a little bit and keep get twins in the games on the, in those games. I think the... I think certainly the potential is there. I mean, we saw both of them come out of the bullpen late last season in September and October, um, they, and they both looked really good in that role. Um, 
you know, Paddock is still coming back from his own injury issues, just, you know, to continue with that theme. Um, but he's certainly been good in the past. And, uh, it, I mean, from what I heard, he was throwing really hard in spring training, um, Arland as well. I mean, I think, uh, you know, we saw a little bit of Arland there. He was a little off or on as a starter last year, but I, you know, I think he's got some experience now and hopefully pitching really well out of the bullpen at the end of last year gave him some confidence. So, I don't know. I mean, it kind of remains to be seen, I think, with both of them. Um, I, I mean, the option was the other option was going to be Anthony DiSclafani instead of Varland. Yeah. And frankly, I think, you know, Varland probably has a higher upside than DiSclafani. So uh, I don't know. I'm kind of excited to see what the two of them can do. I think, um, you know, in terms of if you compare them to most teams, you know, fourth and fifth starters, I think they're definitely um, definitely have a pretty high upside and I think could end up doing pretty well. Um, the, he's going to be brought in, uh, Farney. Uh, he's gone for the entire season. He had to have surgery and it, it, he's not scheduled to even be back by the beginning of next year. Um, Kepler, uh, day to day right now. Uh, Lewis is, he's on the 10 day, uh, injury, uh, injury list, but they're not expecting him back for the entire month of April at this point. Um, you do have to, this is not the first year of this man. This team has a bad habit of starting off the season with a lot of injuries. And part of me is convinced that the strength and conditioning coaches at the Twins, they're not doing something right because it, they should be somewhat ready for these games to begin. It should not take until the end of April before people are in play in shape. Yeah. You may have a point there. I've wondered the same thing. I mean, I know they got they changed their head trainer after the 2022 season, I think it was. But, I mean, that year they, they ended with everyone being injured, which, I mean, if you had to pick either starting the season with a bunch of injuries or ending the season with a bunch of injuries, I think I, I guess I'd go for the starting the season with the injuries <laughs> yeah, option. Yeah. Well, as long um, as they do come back by the end of the season, it's not those longer-term yeah, injuries. Yeah. Yes, I agree with that on that wholeheartedly. Well. Yeah, but, um, you know, it looked like last year they, I mean, you know, at the end of 2022, I mean, I remember they were just, they were having left-handers starting, you know, mediocre left-handed hitters starting against left-handed pitching just because they had no other option. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was basically a triple-A team. So, you know, I, I do feel like certainly last year went better. Even now, I think where the team is at is a, is a better place than last year. And that's even with all of the injuries that we've already been talking about. I didn't, yeah, I didn't even think to bring up Kepler. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, no, man, I, I dude, I don't, I, I am not a fan of this. And then this is, this is, I think the third year in a row that we're, we're seeing a lot of people on the injury list to begin the season. And Royce, we need Royce. If we're going to have any chance at really making oh, I, going further than we did last year, we have to have him for a substantial part of the season. I I totally agree. I mean, yeah, he's he's definitely the most exciting hitter we've had in in years. I would say so. If he could just be on the field, it would it would make it that much more exciting. Rocco, just uh, your thoughts on on Baldali the in in regards to uh, do you? I mean, is he obviously if the if the team collapses, you know, his job is in jeopardy. But what is a successful year to you? Just getting back to the playoffs, winning a, a playoff series, is that successful? Or do you feel as if he, he needs, even with the losses to our starting pitching rotation, do you think he needs to basically get you know, another series at least going a little further into the playoffs for him to have what would be considered a successful season? Yeah, I mean, certainly. I mean, they're playing in the weakest division in yes. the majors. So, yes. I, you know, I don't. I mean, he, he seems like a good manager. I don't know that I don't know that his job is on the line necessarily or anything like that. But um, it would cert- I think certainly a lot of people would be disappointed if they don't make the playoffs. Even with all of this, I, I, you know, I, I expect they probably will make the playoffs just because the, the you know the the divi- the AL Central is just such a weak division. Um, you know, and I, th- I think we have enough parts there to be able to do that. Um, you know, I think that would put the team in a good position for the at least the first round of the playoffs once again i mean you know i would expect whoever whoever wins the al central is going to be the number three seeded team so they'll play the last seeded wild card team and at home and that worked very well for the twins last year being able to break the 18-year curse against toronto and not just win not just win a game but uh win a, you know sweep a series there i mean obviously it's 
then kind of went downhill against Houston. But uh, so hopefully they can get a little further this year. I do, you know, you know, assuming they're, you know, in position at, you know, at the trade deadline, hopefully they can, my hope would be they could get another top line starter to go with Pablo Lopez just to start game two of the series because they haven't really filled that hole with Sonny Gray leaving. But well, uh, I would I would have suggested yeah, they I do mean, that a few weeks ago. <laughs> Personally, I mean, <laughs> you might want to go get one of those guys because they're good. I don't, they've got the hitting that they could trade for it. I just, I, you know, they're just, they seem to be stubborn. And I also, you don't know what's available in the market. And I, I, that's understandable. But at the same time, I think you have cogs you could trade to get another starter. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. They need another starter if they're going to make a deep run. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, all right, so here's the, the the final thing I've got for you, and this is where you can prove your your twins love. What's the best thing to eat at Target Field? Oh, uh, the Mong Union Kitchen. They have I forget what it's called, but they have this like uh, bratwurst thing with like Mong seasoning on it. I got it yeah. last year for the first time. It was really good. You get it with the dragon. Um, you get it with I the dragon. Remember. The dragon sauce, the real spicy stuff. Yeah, yeah, I like I like spicy food. That was that was really good. Oh, that's a that's quality. The Tony Oliva Cuban pork, pork sandwich is very tasty. And then Soul Bowl, I'll give Soul I've Bowl. I've also enjoyed Soul Bowl quite a bit. There are a lot. Of, let's face it, it's food compared to twenty, thirty years ago at baseball stadiums. The food today is so much better than it used to be. That's true. I mean, I don't know, but the you know the dollar dogs at the Metrodome that you could throw at Chuck Knobloch were well, uh, were pretty tasty too. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you are showing your twins cred at this point. <laughs> Although I do not condone throwing hot dogs at Chuck Knobloch. Okay, that just no, did happen no, a lot. I don't either. <laughs> so, oh gosh, remember how mad Tom Kelly got at the fans for that? Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he, yeah, went out into left field and tried to calm him down. Yeah, yeah that was I, something I've never seen before. <laughs> uh, all right, Mike, you are our Twins guy. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. One thing, really quick. We got two games with Milwaukee, three games set with the Indians, or excuse me, the, excuse me, the Guardians. Thank God, I'll correct that. It should have been corrected a long time ago. The Cleveland Guardians, uh, three games at home. How do you think the the rest of this week is gonna go? Do you think there are how many wins? Three, four. Uh, yeah, I, I would guess about three or four. I think we have a good shot against Milwaukee. I, I, you know, I don't know. I assume we'll be facing their number four and number five starters. And, you know, I, like I said, I feel like, uh, Marland and Paddock are, can go up, but certainly against most teams, number four and five starters, you know, Cleveland, um, I think they may have one or two good starters, but, you know, I think Pablo Lopez will be pitching game one of the Cleveland series. So, um, I like our odds in any game that he's starting. Um, so, yeah, I would I would say three or four games would probably be about my guess. I'm going to hope for four because the next series after that is the Dodgers at Target Field. And, you know, Ooh. you know, smart money or not, I'm going to tell you that's going to be a tough series for us to take. I think we can get one out of that series. I think we're going to be happy. So we'll have to see. We'll have you on, back on, Mike, here in probably two weeks, and we'll do an update on the Twins and how things are going, okay? That sounds great. All right, Mike Freiberg. Twins expert and, of course, representative uh, from uh, the, uh, the the fine district. Uh, Mike, what, what is your district? It's 36B? Uh, 43B. Golden 43. Valley, Robbinsdale, Crystal, and Plymouth. 43B. That's There you go. I, I don't know the numbers. I know where you're at. Uh, Mike, as always, all my best in St. Paul. We'll talk to you in two weeks about the Twins, okay? Okay. Sounds good, Matt. Thank you. Take care. Uh, Mike Freiberg, our Twins expert. And, yes, yeah, the Guardians. All right. Yeah, I'm, you know. That that name should have been changed. My apologies. That's that was yeah. That, that, all those names need to go away. We'll take a break. Come on back. Uh, Ted, by the way, from Cottage Grove is our winner of the uh, tickets to go see Sexy Liberal. Congratulations, Ted. Uh, we'll have another pair to give away tomorrow. Right here. Just let you know about that. Uh, we'll take a break. Come back. Wrap up the show for your Monday. It's the Matt McNeil Show on AM nine fifty.